वेलकम एवरी वन दिस इज डॉक्टर मनोज गिडाम आई एम कंसल्टेंट इंडोक्रोनोलॉजिस्ट एट अपोलो हॉस्पिटल इंदौर सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट केस ऑफ पेशेंट विथ पुअर डायबिटिक कंट्रोल एंड एंड इस्टेब्लिश आर्थरोस्कोलोटिक कार्डियोवास्कुलर डिजीज सो दिस आई हैव सीन दिस पेशेंट इन माई ओ पी डी शी वॉज फिफ्टी एट ईयर्स ओल्ड फीमेल हाउस हाउस वाइफ बाई ऑक्यूपेशन she had a history of diabetes mellitus for last more than 10 years she presented to me with a history of uh, uh, generalized weakness and persistent increase in the blood sugar level which she was checking on her home blood uh, glucose monitor and uh, she also gives a history of a uh, single episode of documented hypoglycemia more than 2 weeks uh, ago uh, now coming to the history of the patient uh, she was post menopausal for the last 10 years and she had two children uh, she also had a history of hypertension for last 10 years for which she was on telmisartan and chlorothiazide combination uh, she had a history of uh, coronary artery disease and she had undergone cabg which was done 6 years back apart from that she also had a history of uh, family history of diabetes mellitus and coronary artery disease uh on examination and on history uh, there was some symptoms suggestive of microvascular complication like neuropathy and uh, the, apart from that there was no any history suggestive of uh, nephropathy or any retinopathy on examination her blood pressure was 150 by 90 mm of hg and uh, her bmi was 28 kg per meter square Uh, on investigation her hba1c was 9.2 her fasting blood sugar level was 290 and her postprandial blood sugar level was 328 her lipid parameters were deranged on presentation it was the ldl was 148 her uh, egfr was 78 and uh, the urinary albumin was suggestive of microalbuminuria uh, she also underwent 2d echogram which was suggestive of an ejection fraction of 35 to 40 with the uh, regional wall motion abnormality for diabetes she is she was on uh, metformin which was which she was taking her 1000 uh, mg twice daily along with glimepiride 2 mg and uh, for hypertension she was on telmisartan and chlorothiazide combination and for her coronary artery disease she was on aspirin and clopidogrel combination and atorvastatin 40 mg for last more than 6 years So now to summarize the case we have a post menopausal female uh, with obesity with long standing diabetes hypertension and a history of coronary artery disease uh, with a family history of diabetes and coronary artery disease and uh, now presented with generalized weakness and uh, episode of hypoglycemia now for each and every patient the ada suggests that we have to set a goal for each and every patient and it it is for each and every patient it is different now coming to our patient the ada suggests that the patient with long standing history of diabetes mellitus with say, with history of hypoglycemia with history of micro and macrovascular complications and with uh, we should have a less stringent a1c goal so for normal diabetic patient if it is the goal could, uh, is less than 7 for a patient with history of hypoglycemia and uh, micro and macrovascular com- complication uh, the goal could be around less than 8 apart from that there is very important that in this patient we have to prevent the hypoglycemia because an episode of hypoglycemia it increases the risk of cardiovascular event and also as the patient had a history of coronary artery disease 6 uh, years back we know that coronary artery disease is the leading cause of uh, death in patients with diabetes mellitus we have to take care of that also in this patient also patient has uh, bmi is on the higher side so weight control is very important and also the prevention of complication now coming to the treatment for this patient as the patient is on metformin and glimepiride with established cardiovascular disease the ada suggests that the patient with established cardiovascular disease 
the preferred treatment could be either an HGLT2 inhibitor or a GLP-1 agonist. Uh, regarding GLP-1 agonist, we have a very robust data, very good molecules uh, with, uh, with very good cardiovascular and renal safety. But the problem in the clinical practice is that many of the patients, they are very reluctant for, uh, for starting a GLP-1 agonist, either because of the cost of the drugs and also the injectable medication. Now coming to HGLT2 inhibitor, uh, on the other hand, HGLT2 inhibitor, we have a robust data and also clinical experience of this class. Uh, HGLT2 inhibitors, they have a very, uh, they have benefit of lowering the incidence of hypoglycemia, and also they have insulin independent glucose lowering effect, which is very much important. Uh, they also help in reduction of blood pressure and also reduction in the albumin excretion. Apart from that, weight loss is also an advantage with the use of HGLT2 inhibitor. Uh, the cardiovascular and renal safety is already been established for HGLT2 mo molecules. Uh, one of the molecules in this class that is empagliflozin. Uh, we have seen in Emparec trial, which was done in uh, 2015. Uh, patients with type 2 diabetes with high risk of cardiovascular disease, they were given empagliflozin and was compared with placebo and with the follow-up of three years what they have seen that there was a 40 percent reduction in the cardiovascular death and also there was significant reduction in the mace and all-cause mortality not only that the empagliflozin has renal safety and renal benefit also so they have seen that on renal outcome there was a 39% reduction in the relative risk of incidence or worsening of the nephropathy and also a 38% reduction in the risk of progression to microalbuminuria. Apart from that, we have uh, other trials involving empagliflozin like Emperor trial, then uh, empagliflozin heart trial in which also there was, we have seen that empagliflozin has very good cardioprotective effect. But in this patient, as patient has HbA1c of 9.2, uh, just prescribing empagliflozin will not get us the glycemic goal which we have set in this patient. Uh, so to bring HbA1c to the target, we'll need a combination of empagliflozin with other molecule. So in this case, other DPP4 inhibitor that is linagliptin is very much suitable for the combination for this purpose. The advantage of prescribing linagliptin with empagliflozin is that they both complement each other's action. Uh, the DPP-4 inhibitor, they have the benefit of being a weight neutral, which is very beneficial in our patient, and also the minimum risk of hypoglycemia. Uh, and also, if you see the cardiovascular and renal safety of these molecules, we have Carmelina and Carolina trial in which they have included more than 13,000 patients with established cardiovascular disease or patient with increased risk for cardiovascular disease. And what they have seen that this molecule has long-term safety with regard to cardiovascular and also renal safety because this molecule, it has non-renal excretion. So it establishes its renal safety as well. The uh, empagliflozin and, and linagliptin has the advantage of, uh, as I said, complementing each other's action along with it has cardiorenal benefit and the chances of genitourinary infection, which is a very much a complication for, for the doctors which are prescribing these molecules like HGLT2 inhibitor. With this combination, the chances of developing the genitourinary infection is very less. It's a, it has already been uh, established in various trials and uh, because of this, the combination is very much suitable. Uh, so uh, we, have very, we are very much fortunate to have so much wonderful molecule for improving the cardio renal safety of our patient uh, with diabetes mellitus. So the only thing which we have to do is that we have to just pass the benefit of these wonderful molecule to the patients who are in need of these molecules the most and as I said our patient 
she is uh, she was a uh, diabetic long standing history of diabetes with atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease she is the perfect case for starting this molecule so coming to our patient uh, we started her on uh, metformin she was already taking and with a combination of empagliflozin and linagliptin and we asked the patient to follow up with us on follow up what we have seen that her fasting blood sugar level has decreased to 128 and her post meal blood sugar level has decreased to 180 with an hba1c of 7.9 along with that there was a significant improvement in her lipid profile her blood pressure and also the episodes of hypoglycemia which was present at presentation after that there was no any episodes of hypoglycemia it is very important that we should prevent the further development of hypoglycemia because as the hypoglycemia will as the as the as the patient will go on getting episodes of hypoglycemia patient will land up in asymptomatic or uh, hypoglycemia and it will be very much detrimental for the cardiovascular health of the patient so this was regarding a patient with uh, poor diabetic control and established cardiovascular disease with uh, in which we have achieved our glycemic goal on uh, the combination of empagliflozin and linagliptin combination thank you